how can a person determine whether they are conscious or under mind control, so to speak? So that's a great question. And I'll, I'll, I'll indirectly give you the answer. I'll attempt to provide a, a basic uh, answer to that. But if you want the real full answer to that question, first of all, I highly recommend viewing my natural law seminar, which talks about natural law, objective morality, the world of the occult, et cetera, and occult principles and the operations of natural law and the law of freedom, et cetera. It's about an eight and a half, almost nine hour presentation. Uh, that you can get that for free. Uh, that's my documentary right there that you're displaying on um, n natural law. I call it the science of natural law. But if you go to videos, um, that is the very first video on the videos page. It is called, uh, well, the documentary is the first. And then underneath that, it'll load in a moment on Odyssey. Uh, natural law, the real law of attraction and how to apply it in your life. It is put up there in three parts. So that's a three part series totaling almost nine hours of lecture material with slides. So I highly recommend that three part series. Okay. Secondly, to answer your question about how does one determine whether or not they themselves are actually awake, I would highly recommend uh, if you scroll a little bit further down, I'm not sure quite how far you'd have to go. It's a, it's a series of presentations called Streetwise Spirituality. Streetwise Spirituality, I'm very proud of. It's one of the presentations, there it is, that I, that I gave that I really, really um, am very proud of the uh, basic philosophy that came out of this seminar, because that's exactly what it does. It talks about what does it really truly mean to be awake? Forget this nonsensical wokeism garbage that we're seeing in the world about, you know, you know, uh, opp these oppressed for further you know, segregated minorities in gender going all the way down to like such granular things that like, you know, it's, 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 it's absurd. You know, how about understanding the smallest minority as the individual? How about stop thinking in collectivist terms, start thinking in moral terms and on terms of moral principles. And then you understand that the smallest minority in the world that anyone needs to be concerned about is simply the individual and individual rights. Then we'll, then we'll be on to something. But in that streetwise spirituality presentation, I gave 20 dynamics, 20 characteristics of what it actually means to be an awake human being in the modern world. And, you know, I'm not going to get into every single one of them, but the main ones are understanding the existence and operation of occultism in the world. That's really number one, because if you don't do that, you're not going to get to an understanding of natural law, which is taught in realms of occultism. It's not religion. It's occult science. This is why the social engineers want to keep the workings of that occult science from people, because if you understand it, it leads to freedom. And if you don't understand it, it leads to slavery. What do you think the occult engineers want? freedom or slavery for everybody else. They want freedom for their, themselves and slavery for everybody else. So they want to understand those dynamics and they want everybody to remain ignorant of them so they can continue to manipulate and deceive them. It's actually very logical and easy to understand. Is you got to get the roadblocks of what you already think the way the world works out of your head. That's the problem that most people have. They're rooted in egotism and they're rooted in fundamental flawed axiomatic beliefs. They think they're smarter than they really are. And that's the problem. This community has not reached the level of intelligence that is required to come out of slavery, unfortunately. And that's not making a blanket statement. Some individuals have. It's not enough. The dynamic has to be pushed over the breaking point, over the tipping point. And we're nowhere near that because so many people are still in ignorance of the reality in which we live. Just one of the other main basic factors, I won't get into them all. If you want to study all 20, you can view that uh, presentation for free, of course. All of my material is free online. Uh, I only ever hold in my gift area the most recent presentation that I've ever given. I usually hold that in my gifts area 90 days, then I release it for free. So right now I have nothing on deck in the gifts area. Every piece of material I've ever done is free on this website. I do not charge for my material. If you want a hard copy, you can make a donation to receive a hard copy through gifts, but I do not 
just charge to uh, receive the material in like a through a paywall or a subscription. It's all free. Okay, so the the next major um, characteristic is one has to understand objective reality, uh, objective morality under natural law and align their behavior to it. And that involves stop believing in the uh, in, in the moral legitimacy of government. There is no such thing as the moral legitimacy of government because it is just a continuation of the old world concept of authority, which was never moral. A king commanding subjects as his slaves saying, I'll take whatever percentage I want of what you earn and you must obey my commands no matter how coercive they may become is immoral. It's coercion and violence on its face. All authority is that. Authority and kingship are the same thing. Authority, government, and kingship are all the same thing. They're just different words and euphemisms for violence. They're just different euphemisms for slavery. Ultimately, it's all slavery. The king enslaved his subjects. It's not a beneficent ruling dignitary who wants the best for his subjects and would always respect their freedom and autonomy. No, the king dictates law. Law is out of the mouth of the king. This is where we get the word jurisdiction from, to speak the law. Juris, jus, juris in Latin, J-U-S, means, and the genitive would be J-U-R-I-S, or I-U-R-I-S, if, if we're looking at classical Latin, there's no J. Jus, juris in Latin means law, dictation, dicto, dictare in Latin means to speak or to say. Literally, jurisdiction is to say what the law is, to speak the law. Someone is bound by what you say the law is, what the king says the law is, what the authority says the law is, what the state says the law is. Imagine that. I'm going to say what the law is. No, I'm going to explain through the discovery of the law how the law is operates in the world. I'm not the one that says it and puts it out into existence. It doesn't exist because I spoke it. Okay. I'm simply explaining it like someone would explain how the law of gravity works or how the laws of electromagnetism work. That's it. You know, it's discoverable. The universe didn't place natural, the natural laws of morality here to torture us with their inability to ever be understood. We have to do the work to understand how they operate, then teach that to other people and make it common sense. When we do that, we'll get out of this insane state called slavery, the slavery of government. If we still keep believing in the moral legitimacy of authority and still keep believing that we can dictate to other people what the, the natural laws are, what their rights actually are, or and if we still want to condone the violence that, that is inherent to the state and inherent to authority and inherent to um, the, the covert religion that's running the world, then get used to slavery. It's going to be with humanity for a long, long, long time if that's the path that we choose. It's The good news is we have free will even though it may be very deeply ingrained, we can still make a choice in the moment to change the way we think and then ultimately long-term change our behavior and eventually change the manifested experience that humanity is undergoing.